Hello world, welcome back once again to the Unchristian Podcast. So wonderful and so good to have you join us always uh, and you keeping this appointment with us every Friday or whenever you listen. It's wonderful. Thank you so much. We don't take your support lightly. Um, if you are joining us for the first time on YouTube, uh, click the subscribe button, like, share, Leave us a review and a comment. If you're joining us from any other platform as well, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, uh, Spotify, please subscribe to that channel and uh, share it as well. Leave us a review. The review that you leave there helps the algorithm and the platform to push us to more people. So we really appreciate your support in, 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 in doing that. And as always, I'm never alone. I am with my co-pilot, uh, the wonderful, the beautiful, the intelligent, <laughs> the woman of God. You're so kind. <laughs> with your words. <laughs> <laughs> no lies detected. <laughs> are you good, ma'am? I'm good. Yeah, uh, fantastic. How are you doing? I'm good, man. Podcast day is always my for every day me too eh? <laughs> <laughs> man we are so blessed today mm-hmm. we've got a a wonderful wonderful guest tell us about him all right on my right <laughs> <laughs> well we are the uh, apostle brendan bailey mm. uh thank you for being here sir nandi thank you so much for having me on the unchristian podcast and to me so yes sir absolute privilege to be with you thank you awesome <laughs> awesome he's he's an author of a book that we'll be talking about. Mm-hmm. He's a founder and senior pastor of a church in Johannesburg. He'll yep. tell us more about it. He's an international conference speaker, an apostolic leader, a thought leader. I have always wanted to understand what a lo- thought leader is. Yeah. I think I'll, I'll get to know today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> a husband, <laughs> a husband, a father, and a die-hard football fan. Yes, that's yeah. it. Is that yeah. correct? Yeah, Orlando Pirates and Manchester United, yeah, to be yeah. more specific. <laughs> <laughs> You'll kill you over Manchester United. <laughs> <laughs> Apostle, man, man, I can't tell you how honored we are to have you here. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, I've personally followed your ministry for years. And uh, in many respects, you've uh, even mentored me from a distance in, in, in the word of God and the things of the ministry. And i uh, just like to thank you for your contribution to the body. Thank you so much for all you're doing. Man, thank you so much, man. Yeah. You know, it's an absolute privilege to do the work of yeah. God. Yeah. And uh, that's what it is. It's a privilege, not a right, really. Yeah. And we're grateful that God affords us the opportunity to have a voice, at least at some level, and reach some people. That's, that's right. Thank so you. How's Marilyn and the kids? Marilyn's well. We yeah. could not record what you previously because my daughter got ill, but she's yeah. back at school. She's up and running. Awesome. So the kids are well. My boy is a teenager now. He's 13 and i'm yeah. telling you it's it's a uphill battle for me <laughs> but I'm, I'm trying to make the adjustments as well i was yes. saying to my wife you we need to adjust because he's much older now you yeah, know and yeah. and mentally you're not always prepared for that transition because yeah. you realize you're not dealing with a seven-year-old boy not you're dealing with a 13 year old that has an opinion that has Eesh. a view yeah so we're making the mental adjustments as well pray for me <laughs> wonderful because wonderful. i don't want you to read that i killed this boy amen, <laughs> amen. <laughs> And, and, and what are you doing at Telios Church right now? What's happening there? How, how are things going? Well, church is good, man. Mm. I think coming out of the COVID window, most churches experienced some of the battles that sure. that happened during that period mm. as pastors. Uh, we got to see also the uh, type of things we were building because sometimes when, when there's no hardships, you really think everything's fine mm. Mm. until certain seasons hit you and then mm. you really begin to see the credibility yeah. of what you are building yeah. so we've come through that as well yeah, and we are just building and marching forward as far as that is that, concerned that's awesome so we see you on online we see you on youtube and even in the church but people you know when it comes to spiritual leaders our lives are a mystery sometimes they're like how do we do it <laughs> where does this guy get the time ah this guy is not sleeping <laughs> but just just take take us through a week in the life of brandon bailey how, how does look, it look? one of the so so what we do i mean besides being a father and yep. a husband uh, we have a publishing group as well so oh. we, we do the publishing group uh. we have a tell you school of ministry mm. so i spend a lot of time developing content for some of those platforms mm. and uh, mm. 
Mm. That is what I spend a considerable amount of mm. time with. And then we have all these online programs that mm. we are busy with. I mean, you're running a podcast here and people normally just get the uh, finished product, yeah. but you know the type of work that goes into <laughs> yeah, man. this type of things behind yeah. the scenes. Yeah. And so those are the things that we probably spend most of our time with. Outside yeah. of that, uh, I have quite a busy itinerary program yes, and sir. so I travel frequently both locally and internationally. Awesome. And so for the type of work that I do, I think I have to be prayed up. Yeah. I have to yeah. be well researched. I have mm. to read a lot and I have to trust God a lot to mm. speak to me because there's a demand for the content, you know. I always say to the guys, if 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 if, if you don't prepare well, you're just gonna end up speaking rubbish, <laughs> you know. So so yes. that is really what I spend yes. a lot of time yes. with and since most of our ministry is content driven, yes, yes. Uh, you're gonna have to spend a lot of time yeah. reading, praying and uh, preparing the content so that we can get it out there. Absolutely, and yeah. that's where the writing came in. That's where the writing oh, comes ish. in. Uh, I do write a lot, and, yeah. and, and, and you know, sometimes people say you write a lot on social media, but what a lot of people don't understand is that social media is a platform also on which we sell some of the things that we do, and of if course. you don't write, you don't grow the platform, yeah, you understand? Yeah. So even the writing is sometimes strategic. You would say I don't always write church stuff. Sometimes mm. I would get into the soccer guys. We would yeah. sometimes get into some of the things that are trending. Yeah. But all of those things really is to get people to listen yes mm. yes to get yes. people to listen and yes. once you get people to listen you can equip them you can yes. challenge them yes. mm. and you can shift their perspective ah, and so the content should always be relevant to the times we are in yeah. otherwise you lose an entire audience mm. you know True. you know yeah. yeah that's good well apostle before we, we we dive in um and talk about your book i'd like to know from you what is church how do you define church hmm. it's a very interesting question you mm. know uh Publicly or theologically, church would be what I call a called out assembly. Yeah. All right. And that called out assembly would be a group that come together that speaks the mind of God, equip the people with the mind of God, and those people in turn produce that where they find themselves and that then becomes the culture of the kingdom. Mm -hmm. So that really is church. It is more a missions field than what it is a gathering as far as I'm mm -hmm. concerned. Mm -hmm. Because when we gather people on a Sunday, the idea is to send them out for that entire week so that they can equip and be effective in their space. Yeah and establish the kingdom of God. That's How right. do you establish the kingdom of God? You live out the values that you've been yes, taught. You live yes. out uh, the, the principles that you've been taught yes. within the context or within the spaces that you find yourself in. Yeah. Okay. And, and a fundamental struggle we have in the church is that we try to make everybody churchy, but we don't make people missions driven. Mm. So you find somebody that, for example, is a graphics designer, mm. He, 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 he always has a separation from his Christianity and his graphics world. Yes. Where those things should actually come assimilate together. and yes. come together. You understand what I'm saying? Mm. And this is why we fail in that area because we've not really been missions driven as mm. far as church is concerned. Mm. We've been more focused on gathering the yes, people. Yes, so yes. people gather, cry a little bit, but they have nothing that can equip them within the spaces that they find themselves. So it's I amazing. believe that a church has an apostolic trust, which literally means it's just a, a send dimension. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So if I teach on a Sunday and you a doctor, how do you apply what I thought? Mm. You, you know, how, how do you apply that? So mm. we have a guy in our, in our church, he's a chiropractor, mm. uh, Dr. Travis Mitchell. Mm. And so it's so interesting, after service, he would come to me, would give me his bullet points, and he would tell me what's happening at the office and how he's going to implement sure. those type of things. And that, that brings so much joy to me because yeah. I realize that we are a missions type of driven yes, church. Yes. When we talk missions, we normally think India, Pakistan, yeah. Pakistan. <laughs> Ukraine. <laughs> missions, missions is everybody being sent out on a weekly basis to establish the kingdom of God. That's right. Mm. And we should not always throw it so wide, we should actually bring it back home mm. because all of us at some level, yeah, we are on a mission. That's, 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 wow. that's right. That is so important because there is that disconnect between my spirituality and my work with God and my world. Mm. Yeah. How does my spirituality translate in my world? You mm. know, one of the burning questions that bothers me all the time is how does soul winning look like for for those of us in the city, mm. uh, in 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 townships and uh, rural areas? You pitch a tent there, you evangelize for two weeks. People come into the church, you know, you disciple them after that. But you can't do that in Santin, in yeah. four ways. Well, well. Well, well, here's the thing. When you look at scripture, Jesus actually never mentioned the word soul winning. He mentioned the word discipleship. Oof. Mm. You actually okay. don't find the concept soul winning in the Bible. I mean, you go through scripture, sure. find for me where it is written 
soul winning. That concept doesn't exist in scripture. Mm. The concept that exists in scripture is discipleship. Sure. And discipleship is different altogether mm. because discipleship first and foremost deals with the salvation of the individual, yeah. but then it deals with the transformation of the individual. You understand what My I'm saying? Goodness. So here's the thing. Mm. Joseph didn't win souls in Egypt, but Joseph discipled Egypt. Mm. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a completely mm. different dynamic. Mm. Completely different dynamic mm. because when you look at their values, you look at their principles, you look at the things they live by, it mm. was what Joseph taught them. Mm. Mm. Babylon mm. was discipled by Daniel. Mm. So soul winning tend to have a more evangelistic approach to it, mm. but we end up dropping the ball because our Christians do not mature beyond that space. So in mm. your workspace, you are actually a discipleship maker more than what you are a uh, soul winner per se. My goodness. Because wow. the word soul winning is not in the Bible, but the word that the disciples and Jesus used consistently mm. to Disciple. make disciples. That's the Great Commission. That's the Great Commission. Could, could, could you say that church hurt is one of the reasons why people don't reach that level? Church hurt is a, is a very interesting and a broad subject. And, and, and I think before we even get to what to, to, to the concept church hurt, I, I, I think we really have to define what brings a person to church hurt mm. because when we talk about church hurt, we generally go scenario based. Yep. Mm. But oftentimes, before we get to the scenario, it is generally the evaluation one ever of himself that defines how he interprets incidents or scenarios mm. that occurs within that space. Yeah. Mm. So when we say church hurt, there's various ways to look at it, mm. really. So I, I don't think we can just say, this is church hurt. <laughs> but we need to move away from scenario-based church hurt to understand the soul of a person. Mm. And that then is the difference between somebody being hurt and somebody not being hurt. You can, for example, say something offends you and you interpret it a certain way. Mm. I can have the same experience mm. and, and it does okay. not offend me. Mm. So church hurt is generally subject to where that person is spiritually <laughs> than the scenario or the incident <laughs> itself. Mm. Because incidents don't hit us the same way. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And that is the, 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 the challenge that I have with a church art narrative. Because we get so embroiled in the scenario mm. where you can take two individuals, same scenario, mm. and different interpretation, yeah. different application, different outcome altogether. Mm. So it first deals with issues of your soul before mm. we deal with issues of scenario. Condition of your heart. Mm. And when we get into conversations, we want to unpack the scenario. Mm. Mm unpack the scenario unpack mm. the man's soul mm. then we'll get to the scenario because how he interprets that mm. that is the difference between being hurt in church mm. and not being hurt in church so you've written an entire okay. book on, on this right yeah yeah a great book um it's out we're gonna put it on the screen there it is the church hurt brandon bailey Get it for yourself. It's available right now on, on Amazon, right? Yeah, so they can actually get it directly on our website. All right. And it will download to any of your reading apps now. Sure, yeah. sure. We'll put the website there on, on, on the screen and you can get the book there. You've already touched on how we're supposed to approach this, mm. you know. The people leaving church and not leaving God, church hurt, these are all buzzwords. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> when you hear these things, uh, when people want to separate their relationship with God from the church of God, mm. what comes into your mind? You, you cannot separate the two, man. You know, I was actually joking <laughs> when, I, when, when I saw that little yeah. thing. You, you, I mean, you had, you had a ball with it, yeah, man, and yeah. I was laughing. <laughs> but I actually made a joke, and I said yeah. it's the equivalent of me saying to the kids, I left the house, but I didn't leave your mom. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you understand? Uh, because it just does not make sense. Yeah. It just does not make sense. Yeah. Here's the thing. God gives us the framework for the relationship. Yeah. Yeah. If I say that I've, I've left church but I've not left God, then I now dictate the framework for the relationship. Mm. And okay. that is extremely dangerous mm. because in any relationships, there are certain frameworks that governs that relationship. Oh, my goodness. Right. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. now, now God gets up. God says, listen, this is the way I want to relate with humanity. Mm -hmm. He okay. gives us that framework. Mm. I then say, I want to relate with you, but not in that framework. Now, what happens is the relationship is no longer governed by God. The relationship is now governed and controlled by me. And the moment you change the roles, oh everything is corrupt. Hi, Apostle. <laughs> no, 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 guys. I <laughs> will. Does it, make sense? Does it make sense what I'm saying? It, Mind it, blowing. It, 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 it makes sense, but I want to go back and say. Yeah, yeah. I left church 
because of the people in that particular church or for whatever reason that I left the church. And I have not left God. Right, right. Yes, I'm out of the building because my understanding mm. of church is, is, is the actual, the, the building and the people in it. And because of, of, of something that has happened between me, I, I'll give a scenario so that you correct me here. Don't share your personal life here now because the people are watching. No, 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 I can I'm share it because, because the people know. The people on this, know. On, 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 this, on this podcast, we do share personally. <laughs> we and, go for it. And, and besides, okay. also, the people do know. I, I, I know where you're going, yeah. yeah. In, in, uh, let me share my story mm. a- again. <laughs> in my case, um, I was, should I say kicked out? <laughs> basically. <laughs> basically. Okay, ba- basically kicked out of, of, of a church. Right. And it, it was put nicely. Uh, it was said that your membership is being terminated. Sure. <laughs> it's like the ANC type of thing. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and so... I was left with no choice but to leave okay. the church. Now, I come back and say I've left the church, that particular church, but I've not left God. God. Right, right. So, so here's the thing. Mm. God gives us a context for how our love for him and our relationship with him is lived out. Mm. Jesus makes a profound statement. He says, you say you love God that you yeah. have not seen, mm. but you hate your neighbor mm. that, that you see mm. every day. Mm. Mm. So how then can we justify the fact that you love God? Now, now what's important about that? Mm. It tells us that our relational context in the earthly space mm. is an indicator of our depth of love and our depth of relationship with Him. Mm. We produce a people that want to divorce themselves from humanity, mm. marry themselves to God, mm. but don't give us a reference point of how they are living out their love for God. Mm. When Jesus said, if you love your neighbor, then it means you love me. Mm -hmm. What God does is he puts us in a relational context so that the love we claim we have for him or the relationship we We claim we have with him can be validated because you have a reference point. Mm -hmm. So the struggle that we have when we say I left church, I've Mm -hmm. I've left church but I've not left God, is you don't give us a reference to verify your relationship with God. Mm -hmm. And so church then gives us a reference point so that we can validate your claims. Mm -hmm. And so he said, how do you say you love God that you don't see? Mm but you have no relational framework in the earth Mm. that Mm. we can reference Mm. to validate your claim. Mm. So what does church do? Church gives us a reference point in the natural Mm -hmm. for spiritual claims. Mm. (laughs) Most of us claim deep spiritual levels, Mm. but there's no earthly reference point. Mm. Jesus goes on, he says, uh, (laughs) I was in prison, you did not visit me. Mm -hmm. I was hungry, You you did not feed me. And the list can go on and on. What was he really teaching us? Mm. He wasn't talking about prison. He wasn't talking about food. Mm. He was talking about a legitimate reference point Mm. for a spiritual claim. Mm. Now, what we have produced is people that claim to be deep with God, but they're not deep with people. Mm. And that's Mm. an oxymoron. Mm. That's a complete contradiction. My goodness. So what church does, Mm. it gives us a reference point for claims. Do you understand what I'm saying? Now, to come back to your point of leaving the church, Mm. this now is where we come back to from the soul of the individual Mm. to the scenario that pushed the person out of the church. Mm. Now, I would say to people, there's moments where you legitimately have to leave a church as is your case. Mm. My question is, what is your perspective on church Mm. in general, Mm. even after that? Mm. So, not necessarily the church that terminated your membership you. but what is your perception of church in general do you mm. understand what i'm saying I, I you. because the problem with hurt is it it, it sort of anchors our bitterness mm. Mm. it, it, it mm. sort of anchors our bitterness and one of the, the, the struggles that i have speaking to hurt people is like they cannot be challenged mm. because mm. their pain legitimizes mm. their voice mm. 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 their pain legitimizes their voice mm. My thing is, if you are hurt, mm. the first question that I ask you, it's not what happened, how it happened, how it is, can I challenge your hurt? Mm. Mm. And that is how we initiate the process of healing. Do you understand what I'm saying? I understand. Mm. And that's the same with divorce, because a person goes through a divorce, they cast aspersions on marriage. Mm. Mm. Do you understand what mm. I'm saying? Mm. A person uh, moves from, secu- from, from a corporate employment, becomes an entrepreneur, mm. now you just read entrepreneurship is the best thing that ever happened. You cannot be employed yeah, anyway. Yeah. So, so the problem is sometimes we find an anchor mm. for our bitterness. Mm. So when we talk about finding healing for church hurt, mm. the first question really is, 
can we challenge your hurt and can we unpack your hurt? So the objective of the book is not to say that you are not hurt, mm. but it is to authenticate your hurt. Mm. Right. And that is the difference at the end mm. of the day because mm. there's the myth of being hurt mm -hmm. and then there's the truth of genuinely mm. being hurt. Mm. So again, if you say, I've left God, mm. I've not left church, then you completely disqualify the framework that God gives us to track whether or not people have a relationship with him. Mm. And, and people then, when you define church, right, it's two ways, it's three ways. One, I am the church. Right, right. Number two, there is the local church yeah. that I'm directly part of. Then there's the body of Christ, yes, the church universally. Some people say, I will leave the local church, but I'm still a child of God. I'm still part of the church. Mm. You know, and, and I'm and, still the church. And, and, and I'm still the church myself. I worship, I pray, and I'm still part of the body. I, I, I still interact with my, my, my brethren, and I, uh, you know, but I'm not part of... A, a, a set house, uh, yeah. Yeah, you know, where I get a worship experience. Mm. Some people want to define it or, you know, you use that argument. That yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, so the last chapter, well, the epilogue of the book, I actually write a, uh, a piece where I speak about uh, forming part of the unstructured church. Right. Okay. Mm. The unstructured church is a very dangerous space because what mm. happens when we go through church hurt, we're no longer in fellowship at a local church. It's just a group of us that come together. Yeah. She's been hurt, you've been hurt, I've been hurt, he's been hurt. And we sit there and we narrate our stories. Mm. Mm. And that becomes our little fellowship group. Mm. The danger with that is there's nobody that clearly gives doctrinal direction because there's no pastor there, yeah. there's no apostle there, we're all equals. Mm. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm. All of us are on the same boat. There's nobody there that brings discipline because mm. we are all equals, we've been through the same boat. Now the moment you remove hierarchy, mm. you create anarchy. And this is how we then become rebels that claim to be attached to the church, but it's the unstructured church. Mm. So we need hierarchy. Because in church, you must be led. Mm. He says, I gave apostles, I gave prophets, I gave teachers. Mm. You must be led if you are spiritual. Mm. You goodness. understand what I'm saying? My goodness. And, 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 and so the unstructured church, nobody's led, but everybody has an opinion. Mm. <laughs> and what do we do? We just validate Date. each other. Yeah. Mm. So my issue is not denying the fact that you've been hurt. Yeah. My issue is you are creating a context where you remain hurt. Mm. And that is my fear mm. with this whole church mm. thing. So I'm not going to come and say, hey man, you're not being hurt. That's rubbish. Don't mm. talk rubbish. That's not what I'm saying. Mm. What I'm saying is you are now building your life and anchoring your life around that pain because you don't want to be mm. healed. You're staying hurt. And that is the danger at the end of the day. Mm. So in the epilogue, I speak about the dangers of the unstructured church. And mm. what is that? That's a forum. Yeah. That is, we mm. come together. I tell you, I had a terrible experience with Brandon Bailey. Mm. And, and, and those we stories are normally juicy stories. Yeah. Man, because the truth is, man, we like gossip. Mm. <laughs> you know, if somebody, somebody tells you that Apostle Bailey did, you want to hear the yes. bad side of Apostle yeah. Bailey. You want to hear the terrible side. Yeah. We see him, he's always on social media yeah. writing. Tell me about what he did. Yeah. You know? Confirmation. And so now, and then you come, you tell me about your leader. You come, you tell me about your leader. And we generalize. But guess what? There's still no hierarchy. Mm. There's yeah. still no discipleship. There's still nobody that clearly defines doctrine. There's still nobody that clearly defines vision, that clearly gives direction. There's no leader. <laughs> Apostle, <laughs> how would you advise somebody who has been genuinely hurt in the church? Uh, I'm saying this because I have been genuinely hurt in yeah. the church. And um, uh, not only that, but like I was saying, it was not a choice of mine. Uh, in this case, it was my then husband is now my ex-husband who made this announcement um on a sunday in church everybody was everyone was there uh that was done on the pulpit that's why i was like i don't mind saying this because a lot of people who listen mm -hmm. to this podcast they know about this and not only that um he he went on to dismiss his leadership at the time because they were trying to talk to us as, as, as a couple, me and my ex-husband at yeah. the time. They were trying to, to, and therefore nobody could tell him anything, and therefore he dismissed them, and he brought in new leadership, and they all had to leave, meaning they were also kicked out <laughs> in mm. a very, uh, yeah. yeah. So, 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 so what I would how say... How would you advise somebody, sorry, how would you advise somebody who has been 
genuinely hurt in the church. So I'm speaking specifically to your scenario. Okay. So, so, so one of the things that I will say to you is the, fir- the first mistake that we make in situations like that is we try to manage perceptions. Mm. Mm, mm. We try to manage mm. perceptions. And, 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 and what we do when something happens in the church, whether you're the pastor or member of the church, the mistake that all of us make all the time, mm. we start having informal meetings with people they don't even know. Mm. Mm. Yeah. You, you get me? True. So what are we doing? We are trying to manage perceptions. Mm. Mm. The first thing you have to get rid of is the idea that you can manage perceptions. Mm. People will think what they want to think. Mm. Mm. There's no amount of information that you can give people that will change their mind. Yes, sir. People can sit with a truth yeah. and they'll still side with a lie. That's very true. You understand what mm. I'm saying? You can give them all the evidence mm. Mm. and they will still side with a lie. So the first thing for you is don't manage perceptions. That's the first thing. Mm. Mm. Let people think what they want to think. Mm. Secondly, yeah. healing is an internal witness, mm. not an external proclamation. Mm. It's an internal witness, mm. not an external mm. proclamation. Mm. And that means that I am now able to move beyond this point and participate again mm. in the things that God said I should participate in. Now what we do is we abandon our calling temporarily. Yeah. yeah. So I've gone through a divorce. The people in the church are hurt. So for 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 brief season, I'm just gonna be quiet. I'm yeah. not gonna preach anymore. Yeah. You abandon your calling yeah. temporarily. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But that temp- temporarily abandonment becomes a long term mm-hmm. yeah. abandonment because now you're operating in shame. You understand yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm-hmm. You have to overcome that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You have to be true to your assignment. You have to be true to your calling. You have to preach irrespective of what people's perception is. Sure. Mm-hmm. And that is really where we find healing at the end of the day. Mm. Sure. You understand what I'm sure. saying? Sure. Mm-hmm. So what, sab- what, what, what causes people not to find healing is that season of inactivity. Mm. Mm. And that season of inactivity numbs us. We literally become numb and we become disinterested. Mm. So I normally tell people what happened. Mm. And then we listen to what happened and then I say, but this should not stop you from still being active in the things of God. Mm. 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 Yes. And then I start pushing them in that direction because I know the moment they come to a place of inactivity, it's gone. It's game yeah. over. It's going to be extremely difficult to bring them back come into back. the fold. Yeah, yeah. But also, we will have to learn to forgive people. Yeah. Because the truth is, people will be people. Absolutely. People <laughs> will be people. True. I mean, we, we had a situation now during COVID where I had to release a very, very close friend of mine wow. from the church. Very close to me. Walked with him for years. You know, when I thought about how it unfolded, I realized that, okay, could have, would have, should have. Mm. But, but the problem was that I had to accept that people will be people, man. Mm. That is so important. You understand mm. what I'm saying? Mm. Mm. And, and, and the more I would become angry, mm. the more I would tell myself, this man is not God. Why did you expect him to act any different? Mm. Mm. True. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm. Why did you Strong, expect man. him to act any different? Mm. And I had to keep remind myself of that. And that was what helped me to really get through that particular season. Because the wow. truth is, you know why we are... Mm. We're not hurt because of the incident. We hurt because of the investment we made. True. That is yes. so true. <laughs> yes. yes. It's not the incident yes. that hurts you. It's the loss. It's the investment yeah. that you've made because yeah. you look at somebody as a pastor that leaves the church. You sit there and you think like, I did this, I did this, I did this, I did this. I spent more time with you than I spent with anybody. Mm. And you think about those things and you're like, this man's going to pretend that those things never happened. Hey. Mm. Hey. So that investment is what hits you the most. You understand what I'm Shh, saying? Man. But then you realize, I'm just a sower man. Mm. And my harvest is not always with a person that I sow so it into. into. Mm. Yeah. My harvest is sometimes in another field. Oh. And those type of things help us to get healing. Mm. But here's the other thing that people also don't understand mm. about finding healing. Mm. 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 You will have relapses in your mind. Triggers. Yeah. Aha. <laughs> There's moments yeah. where you would move on and then something would be said, so you would hear something, you would see something and it's like, <laughs> I, I think it's but important. You know what? But you know what that is? Yeah. That is the test of how much of your flesh is dying. Mm. Oh wow. Mm. I, I get you. You, you get what yeah, I'm saying? I, I get you. Because yeah. God will allow those things to happen so that you can see how much of your flesh died in that process. Yeah. Now if you still have the same level of That's anger, like your own evidence to uh-huh. yourself. Now. Yeah. now if you still have that same level of anger, you are not really dying hey. because of the process. These processes actually happen so that our flesh can die. Oh, this is awesome. <laughs> this, this is I'm awesome. I get you. It's so that our yeah. flesh can die. So mm. for me, I would have had these triggers, man. I would think of this guy and I was like, Ardi dom. Yeah. You know, and I would say in Africans, Ardi dom ko, you know? <laughs> and, uh, and I 
as I know you're not supposed to say that. Yeah. yeah. You understand what I'm yeah. saying? And, and I would realize that my flesh is still there. Still, much, yeah. Because it still boils. Mm. Yeah. So what do I do? I have to pray. Mm. I have to say, God, I'm struggling with this, man. Yeah, man. Mm. God, I'm struggling. And this is the thing, man. There must be a level of honesty and authenticity in your relationship mm. with God. Mm. You can actually say to God, I'm struggling with this. Yes. yes. Lord, I don't want to see this man in the next year because I'm going to punch <laughs> him in the face. <laughs> Does Jesus not say, <laughs> the Lord knows what you want to say? Yes, before you say that. Yeah. You, you get what I'm saying? Yeah. So oh, those, those type of things helps us to really get through it, to mm. be honest, because now I'm no longer managing perception. I'm managing me. Mm. Yes. I'm managing Brandon. I'm, mm. I'm managing Brandon's anger. I'm managing Brandon's pain. Mm. So like I'm saying to you, it's not really the scenario that played out that hurt mm. you. Yeah. It's the investment. That you've put yeah. in. There's a, in the the book, there's a chapter in the book you're talking about changing season, changing relationships. Yeah. Yes. Are we saying that we must accept that with changing seasons, relationships will change so, as so, well. so, so let me explain that to sure. you what I cover in the book there. Yeah. So generally in life, we start out together. You guys are here on this platform. You're doing a podcast together. Yeah. But five years from now, three years from now, one of you would grow so much mm. that you will no longer be part of this podcast. You mm. will become too big for this platform. Mm. Now what is happening is one of you would be under the impression that we can still relate the same way. Mm. Mm. I'm just saying, don't, don't leave him. That's, <laughs> oh, <I'm laughs> that's what I'm <laughs> And, <laughs> and if you don't make those mental adjustments, mm. you would say, I started out with her yeah. and uh, she thinks she's better now. Mm. Uh, she thinks Ish. she's somebody now. Now what's happening? You are not judging her based on the changing season. You are judging her based on who she was five years ago when you guys started this platform. Wow. And that generally is where church hurt comes in. Mm. Okay. Because sometimes people don't realize that the dynamics of the relationship changes over a period of time. Mm. And we now say that we are hurt. Mm. But people cannot remain the same. Yeah, mm. People will not remain the same. Access will not always be the same. My goodness. Mm. The privilege of time will not always yeah. be the same. Yeah. You understand yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. 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 I mean, at this stage, you can pick up a phone call and, and call into Miso. But if the Lord comes in and the Lord does something significant, it might be more difficult to call I'll him. I'll have to go through but, the but, PA. <laughs> but, but the temptation for you is mm. to judge him without accepting that his season has changed mm. and you have to make the relevant adjustments. And that can turn out to be a relationship that is now hurting mm. you at the end of the day because you have mm. not allowed that relationship to go My goodness. where it's supposed to go. You know, I wrote something on social media a few weeks ago. When, when Barack Obama... When people started realizing that this man is going to be the president, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, Louis Farrakhan, who is a black activist, and Reverend Jeremiah Wright, who's also a black activist, mm -hmm. both of them on separate occasions said to Barack Obama that, listen, man, it looks like you are going to be the president of mm -hmm. this country mm -hmm. and you will probably have to distance yourself from us if you are going to win this. Mm. Wow. Now, 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 now wow. that's, that's profound because they are black activists and you know how racially divided mm. the USA is. Mm. And, and these guys don't have a good reputation in the American yes. eyes. So they realize that us, what do you mean this boat is mm. going to cost him somewhere down the line? What did they do? Changing seasons, changing relationships. Mm. Now, if they held him to that standard, mm. if they held him to that mm. standard, if they kept on my boy, kept him in the corner, yeah. guilt dropped him, yeah. America would never have their first black president. Yeah. So we have to give our friends the room to grow. Yeah. Sure. Lest we claim hurt mm. as far as relationships are concerned. My because goodness. whether you believe it or not, out of five friends, all of you are going to grow in some direction and it's going to change the social space mm. of that relationship. Mm. Wow. And so when I say changing seasons, changing relationships, I'm talking about a relationship that a local church have with a pastor. So the pastor starts out, he plants the church, he's the pastor of the church. Mm. We're running small church, we're doing what we're supposed to do. And then God loves the man. Yeah. He becomes prominent, he yeah. becomes a national figure, he yeah. becomes a global figure. Now his relationship with his church changes. Mm. So where he was now available, mm. his elders must now be available. Yeah, yeah. Where he could sit down and do those things, he now needs to send one of his understudies to do that. Yeah. Mm. The people will say, pastor has changed. Mm. And they will be hurt by it. Mm. But if the people are mature, they would say, because his season has changed. Yes, mm. yes. This is why he has changed. So that way you important. anchor yourself mm. in not being offended when growth comes. Because what offends us the most mm. is growth. Okay. Wow. What offends us the most is growth. 
when you get a new business and you grow, what do people say? Ah, oh, now that she has the business, she thinks she's all she, yeah. yeah. What offends them? It's your growth that offends mm, you. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> because it's easier for us to relate with smallness than what it is for us to relate with people becoming big. big. Yeah. And we have to make that adjustment because people will not be small forever. Can, can you say that um, offense is is, is, is is proof of immaturity? Where you matured or immature offense will happen. Okay. Where do you matured or immature offense? So it depends on how you take that offense. It depends how you interpret it. On your definitions of things. Okay. Mm. Do you understand what I'm saying? It depends mm. on your definitions of things. And you at some stage have to revisit your definitions of things. Mm. Uh, if I say to Ndumiso, email Delsha who's my PA. He might be offended. Mm -hmm. But if I say to you, email my PA, Delsha, you might not be offended because you, you, you understand that in this world, this is how things work at yep. the end of the yep. day. Yep. Mm -hmm. So offense is literally tied to our definitions. The mm -hmm. second thing that okay. triggers offense is our estimations of self. Estimations oh. of self. Oh. How we perceive our ourselves. Self. It's our estimations of self. And I deal there with estimates. Mm. So if I have a very high opinion of myself, mm -hmm. And I come here and the miso calls me and he says, listen, Brandon, uh, I'm not available. I won't be able to do the podcast, but I have Edward here and I have Nandi here. They will handle the podcast. I will storm out of this place. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You called me, you said you're going to handle the podcast. Mm -hmm. He didn't do anything wrong. Mm -hmm. He informed me what's happening. Mm -hmm. But because my estimation of myself is so high, mm -hmm. why would I sit with Nandi and with Edward? Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So we're going to have to revisit our estimations of self mm -hmm. because sometimes we are offended when certain things get done in the church framework, mm. not because there's something wrong with the process, mm. but there's something wrong with our self-estimation. Yeah. Didn't that happen with the, the guy that had leprosy when he came to the prophet and the yeah, prophet yeah, said, yeah. the prophet said, no man, just go tell him. That. In yeah. fact, he didn't even go. He said, yeah. tell him. <laughs> uh, Naaman, tell <laughs> Naaman to go wash. And then Naaman said, I thought this man would come out to meet me. Yeah. I thought this man would come out to meet me. I'm he a big man. And, big I, man. and I also thought this man would send me to a cleaner rubber. <laughs> God, 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 how And then the servant says to him, man, do you want to get healed? Mm. Do you want to get healed? And then he decides he wants to get healed. And he gets his healing. But self-estimation yeah. led to offense that almost deprived him of his miracle. So offense, that estimation we have of ourselves. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. If you think you're extremely important, it's going to hurt you. Sure. How should we perceive ourselves? Perceive <laughs> yourself the way God wants to perceive yourself. The, the, oh. the, the, the essence of love is... Love, your, love my neighbors, I love myself. Mm -hmm. And what does that mean? That means that if I, I must want for you what I want for myself. For myself. Yeah. Yeah. This way we would never get into a place where we overestimate ourselves as far as our relationship is concerned. It's amazing. Wow. That is really how simple it is. Yeah. If I love you the way I love myself, and when you do something, I'm able to say, I would have also done that if mm -hmm. I was in that mm -hmm. shoe. So mm -hmm. I cannot be offended by this. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? I'm yeah, and that is the foundation. And all these things, Jesus taught us these things. Mm. But we overcomplicated, man. Mm. It is so simple when we mm. actually get mastery on that. Mm. Because of ego. Ego comes ego. into play. Nah, ego is terrible, yeah. man. You, you know, speak about... Yeah, and, so. and when you talk about ego, man, I mean, I've been down that road where I had to confront <laughs> my ego. Yeah, you understand yeah, yeah, what yeah, I'm yeah. saying? You know, you're a guest speaker and you start evaluating how they treat you. And, hey. and then the Holy Spirit would say, ah, chill, Baba, you're not that important. <laughs> <laughs> you understand what I'm saying yeah. to you? And yeah. you just have to go with the yeah, flow at the end of the day. Yeah. And, and, and sometimes we become petty. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Because it's a level of pettiness. You understand mm. what I'm saying? So self-estimation... Get you. It's, cr it's critical yeah. for mm. not easily, yeah. being, not easily offended. being offended. Yeah. You speak yeah. about standards and how, how consistent sta and, yeah. and how consistent they are within this context of ministry and church hurt. What what's your what are your findings about this? Uh, so 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 here's what I say about standards. Mm. Somebody would say church hurt, and I would say to you, but you get hurt in the workspace as well. Mm. But you get hurt in your family space as well. Mm. How consistent are your standards? And you still go back to work. And you still uh, go back. How consistent are your standards? Because for me, at the end of the day, all of us have standards. Mm. But the problem is, we don't apply those standards across the board. Mm. I, I'll be honest with you. When I was in corporate, I think I experienced more hurt in the corporate workspace than I did in church. Mm. Because in the corporate workspace, we got to see nepotism. Yeah, yeah. I mean, somebody is completely incompetent, don't know nothing, and the person gets promoted. Mm. And your manager or your boss gave you the impression that if you work hard, if you put in the effort, we're going to consider you. Mm. We yeah. will consider you. Mm. And then you get there and you're like, in the workspace, you get to see racism at another level. Mm. 
you get to see somebody just promoted because of the color of their skin, because of their race. Mm. And those things hurt, man. Those things hit you deep mm. because you realize that I'm sitting in this space. I am literally sacrificing for this company. I'm laboring mm. day and night. When they need me over time, I'm there. When they need me for this, I'm there. And you get into the space and you see those type of mm. things happen. Mm. Uh, you, you get to see the type of increases that happens in the workspace not everybody gets the same increase yeah, man, not everybody you. gets the same bonuses and you discover those things mm. by accident mm. those things hit you hard My goodness but you come to church and our incidents sometimes are so minuscule mm. in comparison to the things we experience in mm. the workspace mm. when you get into your family space mm. and those things hit you hard your own sister turns against you because Bruh. you bought a new car hey bro your own mother rejects you yeah. because you didn't send her on a holiday. Hey. Because you could not. Mm. Your dad does not speak to you for five years mm. because of a stupid incident. Mm. And it hits you hard. But you're willing to reconcile with family. Yeah. So my point is, and, and, and I mean I'm saying this with a clear conscience, mm. what we've experienced in church is minuscule mm. to what we've experienced in, other, in other places. But our standards are not consistent. Mm. Our standards are not consistent. So Brother. people, when they say, I've been hurting church, they say ch church people are terrible. Mm. I say to them, mm. people are terrible. Mm. Mm. You don't have to add mm. church. People are terrible. Mm. People don't like that. Yeah. You know, they <laughs> yeah. don't like that. <laughs> yeah. They want to narrow it down to church. And I, I guarantee you, if all of us are honest with ourselves at some level, mm. we know that we've been bruised more in other places mm. in comparison to Maybe it's easier church. to leave church. Yes. <laughs> you can't because leave you don't get a salary. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> you don't get a salary. You don't get paid. You don't get perks. You don't get perks. <laughs> so, you know, when it comes to church, even on both sides, mm. what should be exposed? Yeah. What should be, where should be applied discretion? Mm. You know, sometimes you're like, I'm going to expose this man. He's a fake. What, what? You're going to tell the world on social question. media yeah. and tell people what he's done. Mm. Uh, what, what do we expose and what do we keep Not discreet about what are the rules there well, <laughs> protecting the church well, well, the, we talk of protecting the well, church well, well here's yeah. the thing judgment is shaped by truth not okay. by false yeah 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 judgment is shaped Shape by truth, truth not by false okay wow. and, and and what do i mean by that in ba in banking systems they train you on on what is the correct currency they show you uh, the real currency yeah. they say this is what a 50 rand looks like yeah. they don't have 20 false notes there they have one legitimate note yeah and they said this is what a note looks like Shh. So they anchor you in truth. Truth, yeah. Now what we do is we have this, we must expose type of thing. No, no, no. We must teach the truth. Yes. So that when people encounter the false, their judgment is sound. Mm, 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 mm. Their judgment is sound. Mm. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm. Their judgment is sound mm. when they encounter the false. Mm. So what I do, I spend more time teaching you what a true prophet is than what I teach you what a false, false prophet prophets. is. Yeah. I spend yeah. more time teaching you what is the real church than what I teach you what is the, the fake, fake church. church. Yes. So that when you come into that environment, what is true in you anchors you. Mm. You don't help people mm. by, by showing them the false. You help people by showing them the truth. Mm. How do I show my daughter what's a real man? I love it out. Yes. So when my daughter grows up, she gets to see, no, no, no this is not a real man. Mm. I don't spend my time telling her, this is what a fake man does, this is what a fake man does. <laughs> <laughs> you, you get what I'm saying? I just love it out. So that yeah. becomes a benchmark. Sure, so man. what we should do is we should anchor people in truth. Mm. Jesus said, you will know the truth. Yeah. And, and the truth shall free. set you free. Yeah. Set you free from what? Set you free from fake. Yeah. Yes. Set you free from false. Mm. Yeah. So we have to anchor people in, in truth, truth at the end of the day yeah. the problem with exposing the false is that in a day and age where revenue is pushed by 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 keeping people's attention mm. that's the clickbait we use yeah mm. yeah yeah that's yeah. the clickbait we use yeah. mm. and so what people have to understand is that people are, are, are literally just using those type of conversations as mm. clickbait mm. Mm. Uh, because if i come mm. out on social media and i say listen for the next five weeks i'm going to teach you on true prophets I probably get a thousand views. Mm. Mm. If you come out and mm. say, I'm going to show you five false prophets, hey. you probably eat a million views. People love True. scandal. <laughs> yeah, people love scandal. Exactly. Yeah. So, so, so the idea is not exposed. The idea is anchoring people in truth. Oh, I get you. I because like when this. you anchor them in truth, mm. their judgment mm. is always sound. Sure. I always say to the people at church, I say, man, you can't swindle me. You mm. can't swindle me. Mm. Because I'm anchoring truth. The truth. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? You mm. can't mislead me mm. because I'm anchoring truth. Mm. And that is the thing at the end of the I day. I mean, I've been in meetings where, where a supposed false prophet was, I'm standing there in front. The man will discern. He will not prophesy to me. Mm. <laughs> he will pick it up. Have you been in those meetings? Have you been yes, in those yes, meetings yes, where you stand yes. and they <laughs> prophesy on everybody, yeah. but they pass you? Yeah. 
because they, they can pick, pick up. up like this one is, don't play here <laughs> <laughs> because even they can pick up the truth yeah. even they yeah. can pick up the oh, truth wow. even their spirit bears witness yeah. to the truth yeah do you understand what i'm hmm. saying so that is the thing when you anchor in truth it becomes your safety net sure. there's no ministry of exposure yeah because even yep. in the days of yep. jesus there were false prophets when 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 paul when pa- paul and i met simon the sorcerer when the apostles rather met Simon the sorcerer, mm. it was only when he became a nuisance mm. Mm. when they started rebuking him. Yes. When the lady yes. that was a, yes. a soothsayer, yeah. the scripture says for days she would continue, they would ignore her. Yeah. Mm. But it was when she became a nuisance yes. where they started going head on. I see. And so it was almost for a season they had the type of a tolerance for that thing to coexist with the church. Mm. But when it became a disturbance for the gospel, that was when they went there. Mm. But anchoring people in truth is our assignment. Mm. And 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 so so give me a list of true prophets. Give me the marks of a true church. Sure. Don't master in the things that are dark. Master in the things that are light. Mm. Ah, I get and you, that man. way we anchor people yeah. and we produce more matured Christians. Yeah. So so here's someone who says, I feel hurt. I mm. feel maybe offended mm. by my pastor. And also, here's a pastor saying, I feel hurt by my members, right? How should they approach that situation? If they are in the spirit of rebuilding and reconciliation, yeah. how should a, a member say, I don't like what my pastor did, but I don't know how to approach him or this? Mm. What would your advice be on wisdom and how to right. handle and f- for the pastor as well? Mm. Right. So one of the things that I always tell pastors is make sure that a local church knows your relationships. Right. Okay. Let them know who you're accountable to. Okay. Mm. So when we had to deal with church exits, mm. one of the things that happened is I called my spiritual father. Okay. And I said, listen, man, I'm, I'm going to have to release these guys from the church. This is the situation on the ground. And then he said to me, can I call them without you being present? Mm. Mm. I said, of course, because that is how we build. Yeah. Yes. Mm. That is how we build. Even they know that they can approach you without my consent. Mm. You understand mm. what I'm saying? Very few so, pastors are like you, though. So, so, so my <laughs> apostle. is not. Uh, so my apostle <laughs> called him. I said, call him. Mm. I said, call him. He called the guy, and uh, he spoke to him. Called me a few days later. He says, now nah, release this man. Mm. He says, let let him go. Release him from the church. Of mm. course, we do it in a proper godly spirit. Yes. 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 But he said, listen, thank you for allowing me to first engage him before yes. you do it. Yes. Mm. But after listening to him, I think it's in your best interest sure. to let this man sure. go. Mm. And uh, I Sorry, is, is, is it the seniority of the person in mm. the church that determined this process or the necessity of this process? It, both. Okay. It is both the seniority and the necessity of this okay. process. But that process trickles down even to an ordinary member that yeah. would like to have access to my apostle. Do you I understand see, what I'm I saying? See, I see, so I see. we have built that type of dynamic where mm. if you want to tell him, hey man, Brandon is upsetting me and stuff, call him. Okay. Because we have put some of those measures in place. So to, to build reconciliation, let your people know your relationships. Okay. Yeah. Not just your spiritual covering, but also your peers. Mm. Okay. Mm. Let them also know who are your peers. Because if they feel they can't approach me, then they must be able to pick up the phone and say, Pastor Dumiso, mm. we've tried to speak to Pastor concerning this matter. Mm. Don't you want to speak to Pastor mm. concerning this mm. matter? Mm. And you will be able to call me and engage me and we can try to find something at the end of the day. Mm. So to manage that, be very transparent of your relationships at the See. end of the day. Mm. Because sometimes people are not comfortable speaking to you. Mm. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. then create a space for them mm. where they can speak to somebody that speaks directly into your life. Mm. Mm. And you know, if, if I didn't have my spiritual father, I would have probably handled the matter differently. Sure. But he was able to anchor me. He was able to situation this way, deal with it this way. So everything that happened was based on his instruction. Right. Mm. But the beauty of it was when he gave me the thumbs up and he said, nah, you can release this man. But it helped me yeah. to stop fighting. Yeah. It helped me to stop trying to persuade somebody to stay. Yeah. Because when he listened to him, he listened with a matured ear. Yeah. Ear. And, and he's not part of the church. He's yeah. outside of our framework. Mm. And he listened with a fathering spirit, mm. you know. Mm. And uh, he said, nah, let us go. But the person must start to talk, try to talk to you first. Absolutely. Then only when they f- fail. Look, our mistake as pastors as well is that we have become so unapproachable, so arrogant, so yeah. full of ourselves. That, that we literally become a turn off for people mm. in that regard. Mm. One of the things that we must maintain as men of God, no matter how God loves us, is a sense of approachability. Uh, mm. uh, it's a sense uh, of approachability. Uh. Now, approachability and avail- availability are two different things yes, because sir. people also want you to be available when they're available, mm. meet on their terms and stuff. Mm. You can't always do that. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. But maintain a deep sense of approachability, approachability mm. yeah. and let people know they can approach you you understand what i'm saying yeah. mm. but the other thing that people must also understand in approaching their pastors is that 
we don't reconcile so that there can be a winner. Mm. We reconcile so there can be peace. Yes. Yes. yes, yes, Because everybody wants to win the argument. Mm. Everybody wants to win the fight. Everybody mm. wants to come out on top. Mm. And that is childish. That is immature. Mm. Mm. I, I, I don't have to win this fight with you. I just want to mm. know that we are doing things decently mm. Mm. and in order. Yes. Mm. And that is what's important for me at the end of the day. Mm. Yeah. I, I hear you. I hear you. But it's difficult. Mm. I mean, it's easier said than done because yeah. there's a whole lot of emotions that's at play. Uh, there's a whole lot of perspective. There's a whole lot of situation. You understand what mm. I'm saying? Mm. So it's easier said than done. And sometimes it does not happen with a once-off. It does mm. not happen. It's going to be over a season. It's mm. going to be over a period of time. Yeah. Mm. And yeah. we must be open for that at the end of the sure. day. Yeah. Sure. But also, we must not be afraid to release people. Mm. Yes. Mm. You understand what mm. I'm saying? Mm. We Get must you. not be afraid to release Get people. You. Because the other challenge is, mm. you have people that do not want to exit, but they want to use it as a bargaining tool. Hey, mm. hey, for whatever agenda. Mm. They mm. want to use it mm. as a bargaining tool. So you'll have somebody says, Pastor Ndomiso, uh, the Lord is, I sense that the Lord says my time is up at the church. And then Pastor Ndomiso, it's first Sunday, he releases me. Mm. Then I'm angry, he released me. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what you wanted. But the point is, you discover afterwards yeah. Yeah, this man didn't want to leave it was a bargaining tool for whatever his Ooh. agenda was yeah. they were just seeking your attention oh, I, see. I see what reason. you mean I see what you yeah. mean so all right, I, I all right, because right. it was a bargaining tool for uh, something that he had down the line uh, that's why he's upset that you released him mm. so I always tell people when they say to me yeah, they went. They just released me like that. I said, but you wanted to leave, man. Mm. What? What did you expect the man to do? You I've experienced to leave. that. I've experienced mm. that. Yeah, yeah. Now you're upset because oh, they released oh yeah. you. Oh yeah. <laughs> Share with us, a man. Guy, Let me hear. A guy, a, a guy sat in a meeting and gave me an ultimatum. I was leading, still leading the church. Gave me an ulti, a ultimatum meeting. He says, if this doesn't change, uh, then I'm gonna have to leave with my family. And on the spot, and I said, well, it's unfortunate you feel that way. Um, you are free to do, to leave. <laughs> Immediately yeah. change his tone. No, it's not that I'm saying I want to. <laughs> <laughs> it's because not, it's, it's a bargaining yeah, tool. It's, it's not, a it's bargaining not, tool. It's not that I want to. And Pastor, this was not a, a, an ultimatum. I said, that was an ultimatum. I told mm. him this, but that was an ultimatum. So if you want to leave, leave. So it's not that I wanted to leave, but it's because of this issue. I'm saying, mm. this is my stand on the issue. Mm. If you're not going to have your way and you want to leave because it leave. Mm. He stayed. He oh, stayed because wow. he failed. He stayed, right? Mm. But I wish he didn't. Mm. But you see, I but wish, he, you, you wish he didn't. Later down the line, mm. he that toxicity still mm. festered, mm. and his true colors always did not change. So, so what, what are some of the heads that uh, pastors go through, though? Oh, uh, because <laughs> yes, we talk a lot about <laughs> what the members. Our focus is always on the members. <laughs> I think what most pastors want is availability. That is generally what pastors want, availability and consistency. Yeah. Mm. And sometimes you'll find that people are not available, they are not consistent, but they have expectations at the end of yeah. the day. And it's extremely difficult for you as a pastor to navigate the church space with somebody that's like that. Yeah. I, I mean, I had one guy in my church, whenever we asked him to do something, he was in leadership. Mm. We ever asked him to do something, I always had to have a backup plan. Ish. Because somehow I just yeah. knew, and everybody in the church knew that this guy it's will drop us at the last minute. Mm. So we always had to plan with a backup. So it's mm. like I asked Ndumiso to do this, but please be on standby mm. in case Ndumiso mm. does not show up. Mm. And eventually what happened is I became distant and I stopped asking the individual to mm. do things. And we kind of just pushed him to the side, you know, after having conversations, after trying, we just decided to push this man to the side. <laughs> the man was hurt by us. And I mm. said to the guy, you were never available. You were mm. never present for anything. Yes. Even when we created opportunities that would benefit you, mm. you would not participate. Yep. And now you're running around talking about that we hurt you. But when we look at your track record, you've yep. been so inconsistent. Yep. So those type of things, it takes a toll on you as a pastor. You mm. sometimes invest in people. And, and sometimes what people don't realize with pastors, sometimes you protect people's incompetence from the others. Yes, mm. yes, yes. Because pastors, unfortunately, because they love people mm. so much, they sort of cover people's incompetence for the longest period yes, of time. Yes, yes. And so you would hide their incompetence, you would you would cover them, you would but after a while you realize even though you made all that investment to get them up to a certain level, they're still not reaching that level. Mm. And then those people turn around and act as if you did something mm, to them. Mm. So those type of things hurt you at the end of yeah. the day. Sometimes you make a serious investment in people, man. And and I mean you literally go out of your way and you make an investment and then people just pack up and they're gone. Yeah. Or sometimes people yeah. hold you to such a ridiculous standard. They they expect you to be available for everything. Yeah. You, you know? Yeah. And so you find that 
you, you just tell them on this one day that, listen, man, I won't be able to make the, the child's party. I, I can't attend yeah. it. People take offense. Yeah, and they, they do. don't think for one minute that this man has a family, he has a business, he has a schedule, he, he does all these yeah. things. Yeah. How thin must he spread himself? Yeah. Mm. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm. Uh, and so what helps us is when people are considerate. Mm. I remember a few years ago, uh, a couple was supposed to get married. And mm. uh, they asked me to marry them. I said, look, on the day that I land, it's my daughter's birthday. I'm mm. coming from, I was out of the country. It's mm. my daughter's birthday. Mm. And I land on the day of your wedding. Mm. I can get one of the pastors to do the wedding for you. And and they blessed me because they were okay with it. Yeah. But another couple was not okay with me okay saying with that I can't thing. do your wedding because I have something else that I have to tend to. I know this is your big day, but please understand, I'm just back from a conference yeah. outside of the country. Yeah, yeah. I won't be able to be there. Mm. I mean, we had one guy. He, he left the church because I couldn't attend his dad's funeral. That yeah. was on a Sunday. Now, the build-up to the funeral, I said to him, look, man, I will be at the funeral if it's on a Saturday, but if it's on a Sunday, it's going to be difficult because we have church. It's church, yeah. And I send my condolences. I mean, I send my condolences, and I'll send the elders to attend the funeral as well, but if everybody's at a funeral, who's going to mm. do mm. the church? I have to be at church. Mm. But if it's on any other day, I'll be there. The guy was offended. He just disappeared. <laughs> And I knew that was the reason was why the reason. it disappeared. Yeah. Now, I'm sitting there and I'm thinking to myself, do you ever consider me? Mm. Mm. Do you ever consider my schedule? Mm. Do you ever consider my time? Do you ever consider my availability? Do you ever think that I have two kids, I have a wife, I have a very busy itinerary, so yeah. if I have time off, I'm going to give the time to my family. Mm. Do you ever think about that? Mm. And so the fact that people don't consider us as pastors, mm. as pastors mm. that really is hurts. one of the things that, that hits that us really a bit hurts. deep, you understand? Yeah, yeah. Mm. So we want people that consider us. Yeah. 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 Just, just have that consideration. Yeah. Mm. Basic. You know, just basic mm. consideration. Yeah. Mm. And so for me, my time belongs to my family. Yeah. Yeah. I think the other thing for me that is hurtful is when people do not value mm. uh, what you give and teach. Yeah. Okay. You know, they mm. don't value what you're giving. You say, here's a service or here's a conference for this and that. Based on God speaking to you, but you know that God is addressing a particular need in the people's lives mm. that he wants to address through you, but they don't come. Okay. But they're going to call you for counseling on the same issue oh. or a related oh. issue. Just them not valuing what you the work carry that yeah, out, yeah. and the work that is put out. Mm. And... Um, it, 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 it hits hard because we, we invest a lot of time, mm. like Apostle was saying, in the content, in the preparation, uh, in prayer, in just self-sacrifice to deliver mm. uh, particular food, if I can put it that way, for people. But when they just snub the food mm. yeah. and they're just not, not interested. Uh, and, and what you're saying is so uh, profound because the people that need the most counseling are the people that are never present at those things. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. But the people that are present at these interventions yeah, that you create, yeah. you hardly sit with them yes. in a one-on-one -on -one session. Yeah. They mm. take the word, they apply the word, and they run. Mm. Yeah. But the ones that are never present always mm. needs that one-on-one. -on -one. And you don't mind, but you also have to show me your commitment towards yes. what, what... Yes, yes, yes. If I can't see your commitment, how do I keep on pouring? Pouring, mm. pouring, and yeah. And that is the thing. Yeah, yeah. And also... Um, miss uh, assumptions that mm. people carry in their heads mm. uh, that they don't care to verify and then they they start brewing certain conversations among themselves and in the congregation that are not true basically things are said about you they're not true but no one is going to val to validate with you mm. uh, you know you say something on the pulpit a group is blessed another group is offended mm. based on assumption was mm. he saying this and then it starts brewing conversation out of there. It's hurtful because here I am. Mm. If you want to ask, get clarity, ask. Don't go around talking, talking about uh, nonsense about the pastor. Mm. And, and um, it's based on assumption. And when you confront it, and they're like, ah, ish, I realize, but the damage is done. Mm. <laughs> so <laughs> how, how, how do you advise a pastor who's currently going through that kind of a church hurt? We, we spoke, uh, Apostle, you said that uh, if it's an, a member, an individual, there's so much that they can do, starting from introspection. Uh, help me, Ndumiso. Help me here. I get you. I get you. <laughs> Introspection. Uh, mm. uh, look at what is happening. Are you not? Is it not you who is the problem? Yeah. Uh, address it if you can. Address it through with the pastor first. And if you cannot, through somebody who is associated or closer to the pastor. You know, we spoke about uh, don't let your ego be the reason.
be at play when you're addressing such issues. Now, here's a pastor going through the same uh, church hat, I would say. How would you advise him yeah. to deal with the situation? Well, firstly, the Bible says to whom much is given, much is required. Right? Mm -hmm. and, and I don't care how we chop and dice the onion. God expects more from us as pastors. Yeah. Period. Yeah. We always have to be the bigger person. Yeah. We always, when the story is going around, we are the ones that are supposed to be quiet and mm -hmm. not fight fire with fire. Yeah. You understand? But here's the thing. A pastor must be pastored. Mm -hmm. What I've yeah. discovered over the years is that so many pastors don't have pastors. Yeah. Yeah. And unfortunately, there's nobody watching over their soul mm -hmm. and they just become more bitter and that yeah. ugliness begins to seep out into the church. Yeah. Yeah. So what I would normally advise pastors is make sure that you also have a pastor that pastors you. Mm -hmm. Because then that person can keep you on the straight and narrow and can help you. Mm -hmm. Because pastors also deal with issues in their flesh. You understand what yeah. I'm saying? We That's also deal means. with anger yeah. Yeah. And, and, and bitterness. It's like I said to you, there's those triggers at times where you think like, you don't go. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. and, uh, you go through those motions at the end of the day, but what helps you is that you are being pastored. The second thing that helps you, and, and again, this might not be applicable on single pastors, but it's when you're married. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because one of the things about the, 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 the pastoral household, is it's the it's the space where you don't have to be superman mm. and why god calls a wife a helper is because a wife does not stroke the ego of the husband yeah. the way the congregation yeah, yeah. she's she, not a fan she <laughs> helps him to be normal yeah. now most pastors never take off the superman outfit they remain in that outfit even in their space mm. and it becomes overbearing and overwhelming mm. after a season mm. and they start imploding you understand what i'm saying mm. you need spaces where you can be normal yeah because what normalcy does is it ministers to your soul. Yeah. Yes. That's why you see Jesus did normal things. The mm -hmm. Bible says Jesus was sitting with people. Mm -hmm. Jesus would go to a wedding and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Like yet, there's so many of his normal activity yeah. Yeah. that's yeah. recorded in the scripture. Yeah. Most pastors don't have spaces of normalcy. Mm -hmm. I mean, even when we come together mm -hmm. as pastors, we try to be superheroes. And yeah. you sit and you're like, yeah, bro, so <laughs> <laughs> And we talk about church growth strategies. And you know, I'm like sitting there, I'm like, yeah, bro, yeah. Just, just be real it's for once. Yeah. 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 Just to call the soccer, saying? man. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, always intense, man, you know? And so you, you just end up avoiding those spaces because there's just too much drama at the end mm. of the day. Sometimes you just want somebody that's normal. You understand yeah. what I'm saying? I mean, I follow Ndumiso on social mm. media. What I like about him is he makes me laugh. Mm. <laughs> he's not always deep. He's not always yeah. intense. Yeah. You know, you'd say something silly and my wife and I would love it. Let's see what this man wrote. He <laughs> <laughs> wrote something about male worship leaders yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> I, will not, I will not repeat it on air. You understand what I'm saying? But I mean, we were laughing, man. But there's a sense of normalcy. Yeah. 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 And what people don't realize is that after you've had an anointed meeting, mm. you need to get into a normal space normalcy, so that you can rest and recover. Mm. And normalcy is powerful. Mm. The more pastors create normal spaces and normal environments for themselves, mm. the better they become in this journey. Mm. Something powerful, Apostle, you shared on, on your Monday night sessions. Mm. By the way, Apostle is on, he's got Monday nights with Brandon. Bailey, uh, it's a session on YouTube and Facebook, 6.30, right? Yes, Every Monday, uh, I'm, I'm part of that community where he teaches some powers. I want you to get it. One thing that you spoke about towards the, tr uh, the close of the year in 2022 was on prophetic fatigue. Um, yeah. And I, I realized how much, how, how many mistakes that we end up making as pastors mm -hmm. and as ministers when we are in prophetic fatigue that even spill out to this area. Yeah. Where we start making mistakes in the ministry and actually can hurt people because yeah. we're drawing from the flesh. Can you just give, a, give the people a, 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 a summary of what you are saying about yeah. prophetic fatigue? What so, is it? So, so the phrase that I've coined there, prophetic fatigue, is when you're waiting on a promise of God to come to pass, but you are waiting so long that you're getting tired of it. Mm -hmm. You know, like when God said, I'm going to do this in your life, but that waiting period is so long, you actually get tired of it. Mm -hmm. And frustration starts kicking in. So when that frustration and that fatigue kicks in, we start making stupid mistakes. Yeah. You understand I'm laughing what I'm because I think I'm, I mean, I'm, that's yeah. where I am right now. <laughs> when Lord, when Lord. Yeah. We start making stupid yeah. mistakes and our flesh begins to force us to produce the things that God said He would produce by the Spirit. And so now you are laboring for something that God should bring to pass in an, an organic way. Yeah. But you are now putting your mind, your infrastructure, your wisdom, your intellect, your context into it. And you end up paying a price for that. And so when you're in a season of prophetic fatigue, the things that you judged in one season are the things that you endorse in another season. Right, right. What happened with Saul? In the beginning of Saul's kingship, Saul says, we banish all witches from this land. No witchcraft will be practiced in this land. 
at the end of Saul's journey, out of frustration, he consults with a witch. Mm. So and so what is stated again, Apostle? In one season, mm. we judge things accurately, and but in, in another, another season, we, we start endorsing. endorsing the same things yeah. we judged. Yeah, in a and, and that's what happened with Saul because of that frustration for things just not coming together. Mm. So he gets up, he says, witches are banished. Even the witch, when he consults with her, she says to him, When? You are Saul. You have tricked me yet today. You are Saul. You have tricked me yet today. But what happened? He endorsed it. Now let me bring that home. Let me bring that home. A pastor trusts in God, and God says to the pastor, Listen, man, I'm going to give you resources. You're going to get the building. You're going to get all these things. I, the Lord, will provide that for you. The pastor does not trick people when it comes to money. But that word is taking time. What happens at the end of their journey mm. because that word is delayed? Mm. He starts veering into these silly special offerings and this yes. foolishness that we yes. do. Yes. So what happened is in the beginning, he judged that because he knew it was not God. Was wrong. But frustrations allowed him to partake and to endorse it in another season. So prophetic fatigue is a very interesting season because it's also a rites of passage. God takes us through that. Okay. So when we get to the other side, again, you keep on hearing me saying this, your flesh is dealt with. Mm. You, you get what I'm saying? That's why we go through that rites of passage so that our flesh is dealt with. Mm -hmm. So we don't become arrogant and proud when the word finally yeah. comes to pass. Yeah. But the danger is, if you don't wait on God and trust God, you're going to birth it your own way and what you condemned in one season, you endorse and participate in one season. This is why people say, how is it that Brandon started off so right, but now he's way off the mark? Mm. Like, how's Brandon off the mark? We know him to be this guy. Brandon got tired. Brandon got tired of that waiting phase. But waiting is important because it's your rights of passage. Okay, wow. that's so, so powerful. And, and, and your patience is also being developed uh, Absolutely. during that season. Mm. Absolutely. Remember, it was in prophetic fatigue where Sarah said to Abram, take my handmaiden. Yes. Mm. Mm. It was in prophetic fatigue. But she said, no, no, this child is not going to come. Mm. Take this lady here. Mm. 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 <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Mm. Mm. It was in prophetic fatigue. Yeah, wow. yeah. I get you, I get wow. you. We, we apologize for the change in our sound in South Africa, our land. <laughs> we had uh, prolonged load shedding, but we will edit this portion as best as we can to give the best sound. Uh, we don't just want to cut the conversation abruptly. Yeah. So, um, so that's basically prophetic yeah, fatigue. Yeah. Now, the church heard the conversation Needs a solution, Apostle. Yeah. yeah. Needs a solution, right? We need to stop being, if possible, <laughs> we need to stop being a community that hurts each other. Yeah. Somehow. What can we do? This starts with honesty. Okay. Honesty with self. Mm. I must be honest enough to say, listen, man, I messed up here. Mm. I could have done this better. But that's difficult because it's easier for me to blame you than what it is for me to blame to myself. myself. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. And that honesty is absolutely important. Mm -hmm. And God is bringing us as the church to a place where there will be self-introspection, self-confrontation. Yeah. 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 And those things are important. Mm -hmm. You don't just need groupies that sing your praise. You need yeah. people that tell you, but listen, Brandon, I don't get any worship. Yeah. Yeah. So one of the things that helps me is I have older men around me. Okay. Because older men have nothing to lose. They want nothing from you. They've been there. They've <laughs> run there. Straight, they don't care. Most of us, the people we consult with, it's our peers or people that need us for something. Mm. And you will never find the truth in those yeah, spaces. Yeah. Get all the people around you mm. that don't want anything from you. Mm. And I guarantee you, that mm. self-introspection will become a little bit easier, yeah. a little bit easier, and we'll eventually get there. Yes. The truth is, we're in a relational dynamic, yeah. and relationships is gonna cause hurt at some stage, some some stage point. whether yeah. that is mother and daughter i mean one of the things we're discussing now at least in our circles yeah. is adult daughters and their mother's relationship those mm. relationships are bruised man yeah yeah those are hectic yeah, adult yeah, daughters yeah, and their yeah, mothers yeah. those relationships are seriously bruised mm. because we're in a relational framework mm. those things are gonna happen we're gonna tramp on one another's toes yeah. we're gonna rub one another the wrong way we have to mature and just navigate that space a little bit better but you cannot get away from the relationship. Yeah, yeah. It's, 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 it's there, dynamic, it's here to stay. Yeah, yeah. We just need to manage it better at yeah, the end of the day. Yeah. So we can write a book on church, uh, 20 years from now somebody will be hurt. Yeah. yeah. Right now, someone is there to right now. Right now, somebody is actually saying that people should not listen to this rubbish yeah. podcast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because it's confrontational. It is. It's, it's confrontational. It is. It's it's confrontational. It I mean, even when we had to these people, I had to sit down and look at what I can do better. Mm. You know, mm. what, what can I do better as a person? Mm. And then I look at what I can do and what I can't do. Sure. Because you also have to tell people I can't. Yeah. 
Yeah. We 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 not comfortable with telling yeah, people yeah. I can't. We we as pastors we have to say, I can't be there for yeah, you. Yeah. Like I literally can't be yeah. there for you. I can't give you money. I can't do this for you. Sure. And people must accept that we can't as mm-hmm. well. Mm-hmm. And those type of things will really help us to get to a better place. So the idea with a book is not to say that there's no church at least to authenticate mm-hmm. church. Mm-hmm. Is it legit? Or is it not legit? Mm-hmm. Because mm-hmm. not all hurt is legit. But yes. there, there's hurt that's hundred percent legit. Mm-hmm. And that is the idea. Mm-hmm. 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 Okay. You know, um, one of the other buzzwords out there is fake pastor, fake prophets, fake, 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 mm. like we're saying, right? <laughs> um, how do we distinguish between a fake pastor or a prophet versus mm. someone who just made an error? Yeah. yeah. Who knows in part and speaks in part. Mm. Yeah. Uh, you know, made a mistake growing. Yeah. Uh, but this one looks like he's and fake. It, and it's a very thin line between it's a, thin a line, fake pastor right? and somebody who's just yeah. so, made a mistake because yeah. like, you may not Because this one is dangerous. But mm. this one maybe, I don't know, I can have fake. Fake, fake is motive. Motive. Oh. Fake is motive. motive. Right. Mm. Fake is not mistake, fake is motive. Mm. Mm. I can get up here and I can make a few mistakes. But if I consistently come to church, and have certain motives. Mm. It's a whole different ball game. Mm. So when we call somebody fake, I always ask people this question: Was it did this happen because he had motives, mm. or did this happen because life happened? This is powerful. Did this happen because life happened, or did yeah. it happen because this man had motives? Yeah. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? I understand. And, and so I give you a scenario just so that we can make it plain and simple for people. You can have a building fund program that you run at your mm-hmm. church, mm-hmm. and and let's say the building project is five million rand. And you guys collect money, but you guys are sitting at two hundred and fifty thousand, mm-hmm. and you're just never eating that five million. Mm-hmm. And you can come and say to the people, "Listen, man, we're gonna have to use this money for this project because we just not hitting those targets." Yeah. But another person can come and raise five million and run with that money. Mm-hmm. That's a motive. Motive. You understand what I'm mm-hmm. saying? It's not the same thing. Yeah. That one had a motive. He had an agenda. Yeah. So when we call somebody fake, I always ask you: Do you think he had a motive when he did what he did? Wow. And if you can't answer that, you have no right to call a anybody. Malicious fake. intent. Exactly. Malicious. Yeah. And those are the things that we have to look at when we call somebody fake. But the second thing about fake as well is when we look at a church in the book of Acts, not everybody was authorized to call things false. Okay. Not everyone was authorized to call things false. The apostles was authorized to call mm. things false. And they said, they said. Mark this so one, and so. Mark so and so. Mark so and so. Hey. It was not conversations at ground level. Hey. It was a higher level Leadership conversation, level. and those letters were written to the churches in the region. Mm. Uh, Paul said, "The corpus met Alexander, hinder the gospel, right. he caused us great damage in this region." And and what the people, the background of Alexander, the corpus met, is he's one of the guys that becomes born again in the yeah. early church, yeah. but he's still dabbling between his old religion and Christianity. This is Alexander the corpus sure, sure, sure. and so he's in between the two. He's not really there. Mm. And Alexander the Coppersmith starts infiltrating the church and is preaching in two tongues. Mm, mm. He's preaching the gospel and he's preaching this. Mm. And then he says to them, they can't follow entirely what the apostles are saying because there is Alexander the Coppersmith. Okay. So Paul says, mark him because he has hindered the gospel. Mm. But here's the point. The conversation did not start at grassroots. Yeah, man. It started at a top level. Mm-hmm. So one of the things we're going to have to get right in church is that not everybody is authorized to call something fake or something yes. false. Yes. It comes from a higher level. It comes from a higher plane, from a higher authority. Because not everybody is trained in doctrinal mm-hmm. matters. Mm-hmm. And there is something we have to clarify in the church today. Unfortunately, in the age of social media, really, everybody's a revelation. Just go there. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. I mean, some guy writes something stupid and then they comment, the nations must hear you. The nations hear you. <laughs> Come on. So, so we need to get back to order. This is why you have to be in the local church so that you can be anchored in truth mm. and not be drawn away by mm. this foolishness. Yeah. In closure, Apostle, talk about ref- reframing love. It's yeah. a chapter in your book. That is, that is, that is the longest chapter actually in the book. Oh, really? I mean, okay. that reframing love chapter, yeah. you can get tired because it's like the chapter doesn't end. <laughs> and why I said reframe love is because this is where all of us get stuck. Mm. It's like they don't love me the same anymore. Mm. Love evolves. Okay. Love changes. My boy's 13 years old now. I spoke spoke about him in the in the beginning of the show when you mm. asked me. The way I related with this boy at five years old mm. is very, different. very different from the way we relate now mm. at 13. Even my conversation with him mm. is different. Love mm. has not changed. Yeah. Love evolved. Okay. So when we talk about reframing love, mm. we are asking people. 
why do we always go back to love and say there's no love here? Mm. Because love is different. And your definition of love and my definition of love is different. Mm -hmm. And this is the thing that people don't understand. When two people are joined, even in a marriage context, mm. you are not supposed to change your version of love. Mm. I'm supposed to understand your version of love. Oh, wow. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm. And that really is the maturity test in the relationship. Sure. Sure. Now somebody says, no, I want you to love me this way, but I wasn't trained in loving people that way. Mm. I was trained in loving people this way. This way. Now you make the adjustments and stuff, but later on you become frustrated and you revert back to factory settings. Mm. And somebody takes offense, but then you say, but I always love you. Mm. But he does not interpret mm. it as love. Yeah. So when we say reframing love, I go through the chapter where Paul says in 1 Corinthians 13, where he says, love, you know when he speaks about love, though you speak in the tongues of angels and of men, and you have no love. Then he goes on and he gives us a list of love. Love is patient, love is this. So I explain that in a church context. Love is patient. What does that mean? You know, love is long-suffering. What does that mean? And I break it down so that when you get into a church space, you understand the various versions of love and how love evolves over a period of time. You'll find that in a church that we spend more time with new converts than we spend with our old members. Mm -hmm. But an old member can easily get offended and say, Pastor's more interested in the new people, mm -hmm. he has forgotten yeah. us. Yeah. You mature, you season. Everything I'm teaching them, you know it already. Mm -hmm. That's in your spirit. You can navigate the space without me. This one can't navigate mm -hmm. the space without me. Let me hold his hand for a season mm -hmm. and journey with him. I've not stopped loving you. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm yeah. saying? You have to adjust and understand love evolves. Wow. So that is what we touch on there. Fuck provoking. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, now I understand the thought leader. Yeah, <laughs> I get you it, see, you know? <laughs> it leads us in the way we think. And what we all wrestle with the flesh, man. I'm telling yeah. you, I can sit here and give you stories for days where my flesh got a better of me. Yeah. And I realized that nobody owes me anything. Yeah. You know yeah. I mean? I remember one day my dad said, I was angry. People didn't do something that I expected. My dad said, but they don't have to do that for you. Mm. <laughs> my biological my, my, my dad, he said, but they don't have to do that for you. I said, what do you mean? He says, they don't have to do that for you. Mm. And I realized I developed the sense of entitlement over a period yes. of time. Yeah. And my dad began to give me the difference between privilege yeah. and a sense of entitlement. Mm. So these days when people show me kindness, I treat it more as they being kind towards me. Yes. I'm in a privileged position yeah. where they do this for me, but they don't have to. They don't have to. And that Catch makes it easy for me Catch to you. navigate that space. Yes. So our ego is really what hurts our yeah. relationships yes. at the end of the mm. day. Right. Ego. ego, marriage, ego, ego. it's ego that hurts our marriage. I always say to people, sometimes people don't even get divorced because of, of immorality. They can work through that. Mm. They can actually work through it. I've met couples that can work through that. Mm. It is ego and trying to manage people's perception. Mm. You understand what mm. I'm saying? There's a couple I know, they work mm. through it. But they ended up divorcing later and i said why did you divorce because you were able to overcome some of those challenges in your marriage mm. and you know what the guy said to me he says it's the way the people looked at me mm. oh. and i said ah now you've summed it up for me <laughs> it's your ego and it's you trying to manage perceptions yeah. God, ego is dangerous, eh? yeah. you understand what i'm saying because yeah. ego wants to manage any, everything yeah. it wants to control everything Perceptions. so so that is our struggle yeah. when you look at your relationships not just marriage friendships yeah. business relationships is what what separates us? It's our ego. Mm. Yeah. It's our flesh. It's yeah. our canal. Yeah. It's I'm me not getting my way. Yeah. And that is literally what forces us to separate. And sometimes that separation is necessary yeah. because if people refuse to grow and understand what we're building, then maybe that separation yeah. is necessary yeah. Yeah. until you get to the other side and re-evaluate what you have. Yeah. Because sometimes you only know it once you lose yeah. it. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I always say to the guys, I say, you won't know the value of this until you get to the yes, other side. Yes, yes. You, you won't know the value. Yeah. I mean, the other day I got a call, somebody we released from church, and I'll, I'll say this. And the, they asked me, they said, hey man, do you know this guy? Uh, he came here, he says he knows you, you're spiritual father, you're close with him. I said, no, I'm not close with that guy. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and uh, I know him, yeah. he was with me, but yeah. we're not close. Not anymore. <laughs> uh, but you know what, what, what dawned upon me? was that he then understood the value of my name outside. Mm. Oh. oh yeah. When he was with me, mm. he did not know the value of my name. Mm. But when he got to the other side, they asked him, do you know Brandon Bailey? Weren't you with Brandon yeah. Bailey? I'm not saying that from a proud place. I'm mm -hmm. just saying that for illustration yeah. purposes. Yeah. But he did not know the value of the yes. name Why? until Why? he had to negotiate a seat at a new table. Yes. Oh, wow. yes. So the point is that sometimes you only know the value in hindsight. 
Mm. Separations is sometimes necessary so that people can learn value. Yeah. You can learn to appreciate. Yeah, because I want you to give us uh, all the information about the, the websites. Tell us to this community, you know, right. even 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 the way people can get the book again. Mm -hmm. But uh, before you do that, I want you to speak to us. On the Unchristian podcast, we want to facilitate conversation and heal. Uh, conversation in the areas that the church is unwilling and unable to talk. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, what's your advice to us? Before I came here, I said to my wife that I like your platform because you are dealing with things that people don't want to speak about. Yeah. This has been one of my art. Art Christ for a very, very long time. Mm. I think one of my biggest frustration is that we, we we're not truthful, we're not honest, yeah. we're not authentic. You know, we we, we tiptoe around certain mm. things. And so the unChristian platform, Christian podcast platform, is is an amazing concept because you are touching on things that we are thinking, we're not saying. but we're not saying. <laughs> yes. And the only way we can get better at it is to actually have those conversations That's at right. the end of the day. Right. So what you guys are doing is absolutely brilliant. And I want to encourage you not to be fearful. Okay. You know, even even if somebody says, oh, that's a sensitive subject, don't touch on it, touch on it. Mm. Because the sensitive subjects is what's missing in the church. Mm. We recycle all the old conversations yes, sir. Yes, sir. and we jump over the sensitive subjects. Yeah. I mean, even this topic of church, this is the first time where I'm actually on a podcast yeah. where we actually discuss church. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I can't recall that there's ever been a platform where we discussed it the way we've discussed it today. Mm. So what you guys are doing is absolutely brilliant. Speak about these things, man. You know, speak speak about all of these things. Mm. Speak about Christians battling with lust. You understand yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, because yeah. those things are real. Yeah. Mm. Those things are absolutely real. Mm. You come to church and you think Christian people don't have lust. Come mm. on, man. Get mm. 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 Don't speak about those type mm. of things. And those conversations mm. are necessary because it helps us to become mature yeah. and it helps us to deal better with things. This way, we break the stigma yes. that is always associated with certain topics. Yes. I mean, when I posted a book, a lady commented and she said, no, no, I think I wrote something on church before I posted a book. And she commented and she said, no, the church is scared to deal with us. I said, no, no, we're actually mm -hmm. writing books on this. We mm -hmm. have podcasts on this. We're actually engaging. Mm -hmm. we, we're talking about this. Mm -hmm. uh, because we have given the world the impression that we're scared. scared. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and, not. And, and, not. It, <laughs> and it disturbs my spirit yeah. that God would give us so much content, such mm. rich content in the scriptures, yeah. and we're scared to say it. Yeah. I mean, the Bible is rich, yeah. mm. but we won't touch it. Yeah. We won't speak about yeah. it. Yeah. So those are things we have to confront. Uh, I mean, another subject that we have to confront is, is, is gay and lesbian, yes. Yes. homosexuality yes. in the church space. Yes. Yes. Those are things we have to discuss mm. at the end of the day. Mm. So what you guys are doing is absolutely brilliant. Thank you, sir. And I think for me, this is probably the, the best platform I've been on yeah. because we're speaking about real stuff. Yeah, so Thank we you. Appreciate so, yeah. Tell us where people get hold of you, the websites, the platforms, and everything. So, so our website is uh, teleoschurch.co.za. There you can get all our content, all our resources, yeah. and then we tell you church on social media. I think Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, you'll find us there as well. And on those platforms, you can buy all our resources. Yeah. Uh, when you go to the Telios uh, Facebook page, you will also find the Telios community link where we do our schools of ministries and we're starting a Bible study tomorrow evening. Mm -hmm. uh, you can register for it on that platform as well. But everything that you need, the front end is teleoschurch.co.za. Our email addresses are on there. Everything is on there. And you can follow me as well on uh, social media, just Brandon Bailey, you'll find me there. And uh, let's engage, let's talk. Thank you. Amen. The name of the book is Church Hurt by Brandon Bailey. Get it for yourself. It's been a fascinating conversation. Yeah. I loved it. Fantastic. Awesome. I loved it. Awesome. It, it got me thinking. <laughs> I can't wait to have him again. You become a friend, you become a family. <laughs> we you. When you come here, we adopt you and we can call on you, you know, as per availability. <laughs> We'd love to. Thank love you so to. much for having me, man. I'm telling you. This is going to be one of my favorite podcasts yeah, now, man, because yeah, yeah. I love it. Uh, and the way he writes on social media, he writes the things that I that, that I can't say, but he can say. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So thank you so much. Thank you so thank much. You. Thank, thank you, you. Thank thank you, thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe thank you. Uh, to this channel. Like the video. Share the video. Uh, let people know. And uh, please leave us a review. We're going to see you next time. From us, it's a goodbye. Cheers. Thank you.